everybody. Thanks for being here. For, uh, so for s some of you that were yesterday at my conference, my name is still Cyril Mottier. I'm uh, an Android Google developer expert, but today the difference is I'm not going to talk about how to optimize your application. I will just give you some of the new features that have been introduced with Android Jelly Bean. So let's start with a simple game. So this is the logo of Jelly Bean. And can you tell me what are the differences between the image on the right and the image on the left? Come on, this is a game for five years old people, or five years old kids, so please. Nobody? So you are all kids that don't know what the, are the differences between those images. Actually, there is no differences because they are both uh, describing Android Jelly Bean. The only difference remains in the fact that there is actually two, dif two different versions of Jelly Bean. The first one is 4.1 and the second one is 4.2. 4 so I will talk about the two, two uh, versions, sorry. So the first one is Jelly Bean Android 4.1. So this version has been released um, now six months ago during Google I.O. 2012. And in, the, um, in, in this uh, version, one of the main project was Project Butter. So this is not the name that I've chosen. Yeah, it's Project Butter. And uh, the initiative behind this project was to make Android smoother, make Android with no hiccups, no stutters, which was one of the biggest issues um, that, uh, that people were complaining about. So it, this project included three uh, different features. The first one was V-Sync. So I don't know if you know what V-Sync is. Basically, it's a signal that is sent by the display to the system to notify the system that the display is ready to, to render a frame. So thanks to that, now, thanks to, to v, the V-Sync, the system can now ask your application to render a frame at the exact moment where the, the display is ready to, to display a frame. So thanks to the V-Sync, you can ha now have the um, maximum amount of time to draw and to render a frame, which is basically 16 milliseconds when you want to render 60 frames per second, which is, you re it requires you to draw in less than 16 milliseconds. So thanks to that V-Sync, now all on draw in your, uh, in your, um, in your application is now uh, called at the exact um, signal sent by the display. So the second feature that was introduced was triple buffering. So basically, prior Android 4, that one, there was two buffers. One for rendering, in your, for, for, so that your application can render its content in the buffer, and the second one was used by the CPU. So thanks to triple buffering, you can now ensure that there is always one buffer that is ready to use by your application so that you can render your frame in it. So one will be used, for instance, by the GPU, the second one will be used by the CPU, and the third one can be used by your app so that you can render the frame. And finally, the third improvement was touch responsiveness. So basically, what Android does starting 4.1 is that when you start touching the screen, it boosts the CPU so that, you know, uh, it reacts more, uh, more instantly. So that was one of the major projects in Jelly Bean 4.1. Uh, basically, from a developer point of view, you have nothing to do. Everything is handled by the system. So if, you're, if you are using um, uh, SDK classes, you have nothing to do. The only case that you can have, some, uh, have something to do is when you are doing your animation on your own. But most of the time, everything is running smoothly just by doing nothing. And if you have still some problem, even with Project Perter in your application, then a new developer tool has been released, which is called SysTrace. And with SysTrace, you can measure everything in your, in your application. For instance, the amount of time taken by your application to, to uh, read the disk, to access the memory, and stuff like that. So it's, it's a very useful, very useful uh, developer tool if you want to optimize your app. So that was... Um, one of the biggest improvements for a user point of view. Another, some other uh, improvements were some improvements in the uh, built-in applications. For instance, in the Launcher app, you can now resize the widgets, which was not possible bef before it, and you can also, uh, if you resize too much, then the system will automatically move the icon so that there is enough space for widgets to be, to be positioned on screen. 
The camera application has also been improved with instant browsing, or the, some, some people call it the gallery view. So now when you're swiping the camera, you can now access the, to the photo you've taken. And if you want to remove one, you just have to swipe to the top. And this one, like this one. And uh, when you're doing that, then the photo is completely removed from the disk. But you, fortunately, you can you know, still undo, in, undo it if you've done a mistake. Another improvement was the offline uh, speech recognition. So starting Android 4.1, you don't have to have an internet access now to have speech, rec speech sorry, recognition on your device. You only have to uh, download the dictionary. And once the dictionary is downloaded, then everything can work offline. So you can now type your messages or your emails just by talking to your phone, which can be strange, but it's possible. Notification. This has always been something very important in Android, starting day one. So notification is um, basically uh, a system that lets application notify the user that uh, uh, a global-wide um, event has uh, occurred. So starting Android Jailbin 4.1, the notification has been completely redesigned. So now you have smarter notifications. So for instance, here, so sorry, the screenshots are in French, but basically the first one is uh, screenshots taken. So the first notification displayed the screenshot that I've taken, and also an action which is partagé, which means share. So you can now, with the smarter notification, completely um, do some action without even opening the underlying app. So for instance, I can share an app with the gallery app just by using the notification tray, which is a huge improvement. So you can use that starting 4.1. And finally, one of the biggest improvements from a user point of view was a completely redefined search experience. So with the introduction with, oh, sorry, um, Google Now. So I think you've all heard of Google Now. So Google Now is basically a tool that predicts everything for you. It will tell you what you have to do today, if you want to, if you want to go home now, when to uh, take your um, car uh, at the appropriate time, and stuff like that. So you can test Google Now very easily if you have um, an Android phone just by swipe, swiping to the top. You touch the, um, the bottom bar, the system bar, and you swipe to the top, and this will launch Google Now. So that was the improvement that has been introduced in Android uh, 4.1. But actually, during Google I.O. 2012, some other improvement has been made to, uh, not for, to Android, but to products that are very related to Android, such as the Google Play. One of which, and I love this one, is the smart app updates. So basically, when you were updating an application prior for that one, what the system w was doing was it was completely downloading everything. So here is an application that is drawn in red. So you have several packets, and everything was uh, downloaded again. Starting uh, June 2012, the the Google Play will now download only the packet that has changed. So basically what it does, it, it looks for the packets that have changed and only download those packets and recombine the packets on the device so that uh, the application is now updated, but you've downloaded as, minimal, uh, as minimum packets as possible. And fortunately, this is not just available for Jelly Bean users. It has been backported back, way back to Gingerbread. So if you have a gingerbread app, um, device, sorry, then you, you have smart app updates enabled. And from a developer point of view or from a user point of view, you have nothing to do. Everything is completely automatic. And finally, maybe you've heard of cloud to device messaging. Does somebody know? Yeah, so, so basically what was cloud to device messaging was a push mechanism so that you can send messages from one server to some devices. But this was, let's say, a beta version. So it has been completely renamed as Google Cloud, uh, Google Cloud Messaging, sorry. And some new features has been introduced, such as multicasting. So you can now send uh, a message from the server to several devices just by one HTTP request. 
you can also add some payload to your message. So you can you can add some I don't know some information, some music, some data to your message, so, so to your push message. And there is no quota limitation, and it's completely free. So if you want to have push in your application, I highly suggest you to uh, use Google Cloud Messaging because this is a very efficient way to do it. So that was Android 4.1. But as I said, Jalbin is also comes with two flavors. The first one was 4.1, and the second one was 4.2. And 4.2 brought multi-user support. So multi-user support is only enabled on tablets. It's not available on phones. But what it does, basically, is that you can use a tablet with for several users. So this is my tablet. Uh, my tablet, sorry. Um, well, actually, this is not my tablet. This is the tablet of my wife. And uh, because it's my wife, she doesn't want me to use it. But starting 4 or 2, I can now use it because I have my own account on it. So as you can see, there is, there is some avatars on the bottom. So if I click on my, my avatar, then the, um, the tablet will completely switch to my account. So basically, from a user point of view, you will have no change. I mean, all of the apps that are in my account will be mine. And all of the apps and all of the information that are from my wife's will be um, uh, her, uh, hers. Sorry. And um, from a development point of view, you have also almost nothing to do. The only thing that you have to do is, for instance, if you are currently you know, playing some music, then if the user switch from one account to another, then you have to, to stop you know, uh, playing the music. But basically, you have nothing to do to enable this. So this is very interesting to, to use. And uh, if you are very interested in how it works uh, and how it sandboxes all of the information, what, it, what the system does is that um, it, it, it splits the memory so that you have one folder for each account. So for instance, uh, my girlfriend here is for the account number zero and, and I'm the account number one and, and so on. So you can have a, a multiple number of accounts on, on the same device. So the lock screen has been improved too. So I, I think that you all know what a lock screen is. It's pretty boring, actually, because it's just here not to uh, have your phone you know, working in your pocket or so that nobody can use it when it's not you. Uh, starting for the two, um, some widgets. So the same widget that were on the desktop has been uh, move to the lock screen so that you can access to the uh, to some important information such as your email, your calendar events, or even your uh, Google Plus uh, streams like this one. And also daydreams has been introduced. So basically daydreams are wallpapers that are only visible when your device is docked. So you know when you have a dock or in, in the car for instance or on your desktop or when you are charging, recharging your device. So personally I don't use that but if you want to have something that is displaying on screen when you're charging your device this is now possible. Full native right to left uh, language support. So uh, Swedish is like French, it's like English, so we all write from left to right, which is not a problem for us, but actually some people uh, write from right to left, such as Arabic. So this is a screenshot of the setting application. So uh, starting 4.2, it's now possible to have a completely full native support for this uh, type of languages. And uh, in order to do that from a developer point of view, you have just that to do. When you are using gravity or layout gravity, please replace left and right by start and end. So basically what stop does, if, if you are in a left to right language, then uh, start is left. And if you are in a right to left language, then start is um, right. Regarding the developer features, a new interesting feature is the nested fragment. So you can now have some fragment in fragment in fragment. So just like the Inception movie. And um, basically, I, I don't really think this is very necessary. It's not 
that much necessary is very necessary when you are using a view page because in a view page each page is a fragment and if you want to you know uh, insert this view page in a fragment then it was not possible uh, prior folder two. So this is now possible and this has been backported of course with the Android support library way back to 1.6 so APA, API 4 and uh, finally some cool new developer options have been introduced in Jellybean so in order to enable it first in Jellybean you have to type seven times on the build number in in the setting application and once this is enabled you can you know enable several developer options such as uh, show me um, the overdraw show me the layout bounds show me everything that is completely um, changed on screen and stuff like that and that's it. That was everything that I had to say in only 15 minutes. So if you have questions, don't worry. I will be here. So feel free to come by and say hello. Thank you. Well, if we, yeah, sorry. <laughs> maybe, maybe we have time. So if we have time. So if you have questions, feel free you know, to ask. No questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.